All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful day. It was seven hours of wild moves to go absolutely nowhere, but the main event was Jerome Powell today, and believe it or not, he actually changed his speech, and he said something that was hawkish. He came out today during this little interview, and he said that the recent data does not make him confident that they are reaching their inflation goals. This is new. It is different than all the other times we have heard from Powell. Last time he even had the jobs data, he didn't say anything about it. He said, nah, data, we expect it. All of that good stuff. But today, finally, four months into it, you had your admission by Powell and the market reaction was pretty wild because at first, it seemed like the algos in the market heard it. And then we're like, is it a mistake or or not, and people were like, nah, we could brush it off. It was the only thing he said. Everything started to sound the same, and then you had Nick Timmerous tweeting about it. Then he put out an article saying that this gets rid of all of the rate hikes here for the first quarter, or he's saying preemptive or soft landing cuts, and was pretty much acknowledging that what we got today was actually hawkish, and then the market swung around, and even though it seemed a little bit crazy... We barely moved at all, and most of that was even in the last couple of minutes, and believe it or not, you did not get that many war headlines, so it was a wild day, but the thing is... Powell shifted up today. There's one more factor that we have to keep in mind. I'm going to tell you when we get towards the end of the keys, but now we got more earnings. The bonds in the market are still reacting, and this story is just still heating up. So, Chad, I have the place for you. I have the keys, all that good stuff. What I need from you, a thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed, and if you don't know, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open, youtube.com slash the stock market. We We'll see you there in the morning, baby. Run it. Walking to the top, it's the joints on the ledge. Live in the hills, but I still get a spread. Started with a live, but I still reinvest it. Fear how I fear, do you feel less and less? I just want the lesson. I just want protection. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Mama never plans if he waits for perfection. Think it to the down. Yeah. All right, off the bat, like I said, you probably noticed compared to yesterday and leading into the weekend, there was not that many war headlines today. Israel came out and they said they wanted to leave Iran guessing so you know never let them know your next move but you didn't really hear much on it some of the war plays like oil defensives gold they all had their moves and they kind of all still held up but we did not get any escalation it will be something we are gonna look out for tomorrow but maybe it does kind of turn de-escalatory we will see but Powell he was surprisingly the big surprise because this was the man who hasn't changed changed his speech in a while and now finally he said something new it was a little bit more hawkish but it definitely was not comparable to the times where Powell has came out and been hawkish trying to like guide the market if anything maybe if you want to argue that the market liked it it was Powell giving a realistic acknowledgement of the data he even brought up the averages and we even talked about this right ahead of the data I give you guys daily updates so I might as well show you again but remember that three month and six month average of CPI it has been much hotter than what got you down here and what was just leading into the last few months and if we uphold some of these recent ranges for the next couple of months leading into November we will be having a much higher CPI and if anything Powell acknowledged that today it was not the same speech of him saying well yeah this is what we expected this was the data no he said it is not giving us confidence the way that Nick Timmerous put it essentially was that it was a confidence reset for the Fed. So I do think we are going to get some reaction here moving forward today. You didn't really move much, but I do think those delays we talked about, we are going to see more of that because essentially what you got today was the market barely moving and the bonds moving massively once again. I think this little gap will close here, whether it takes a couple days or not, but we'll talk about it here in a little bit, how this starts to move into it 
it is very key, but it's very hard to ignore what has already happened. But don't let me get ahead of myself. That's your first key. The second key, which ties into everything that you saw today. You had Powell. He was a little bit more hawkish. You see how the market moved, and although it didn't move much, there was a lot of things underneath the surface with Bonds, and now before even Powell and through all of it, we are now pricing in just about one or a little bit more than one rate cut by this year, and it's for November now. June, July, the Fed futures no longer have that priced in as any sort of certainty. If we are going to get any sort of non-debatable rate cut priced in on the Fed futures, that is now for November. And here's a fun fact, the election is on November 5th, and the Fed meeting is is on November 7th, two days later. But that being said, these bond moves, and it's funny because Powell may have said something surprising, but the bonds were already clobbered to begin with. They are not getting surprised because they have already moved to more bearish than even the Fed. If anything, the bonds have acknowledged this well in advance of Jerome Powell. So this was the first big factor of all of it. The second big thing, though, and we brought this up, is like with all of it being said and done, the market is still holding up quite nice, but now this whole 4.5% interest and the pressure and watching rate cuts get priced down saying, oh, there's no effect. Well, there there is an effect. I mean, we are still elevated, but this is what I was saying here all day today. It's like, take a look at the market now, even on your long term. Some people, it was even worse, but you should be down now about a little bit more than a month of gains. The S&P has now backtracked just about one month, but like, remember all the days where the bonds would be moving and yields would be going up, and we we're kind of like, no, it's not really moving there, and just because you would go down and the market would hold up, the bonds were getting clobbered. It seemed like there wasn't relationships Again, you would price out rate cuts and you would still be elevated. Well, now that has gone. It's not moving as much. And this is like massive. You see TLT. It's way, way, way bigger than a divergence. And the drop they made is way bigger than the market. But now you have, as we have gone above 4.5, I mean, the pressure, you could now see it in the market. And now it's been about a month, now a month and a little bit more since we have actually gone up and have been gone down and now finally setting some downside momentum after just craziness so hopefully you get what I'm saying here because now we're still in that question of is this August September October of last year what happens with the rates and then I mean man what is Powell even going to do and then now we get to have earnings and all of that good stuff but that is key number two the final thing coming into tomorrow not only earnings you're going to get a lot of CPI and PPI data from Europe and a couple of other countries so we're going to have some things to wake up to not much for the United States I think we have the beige book and that's about it but one thing I would keep in mind moving forward is that tomorrow morning ASML then Thursday you're going to be getting TSM and that's going to kick off all of the chip earnings and that might be the sales for the market here in the short term especially after we have now finally given into this pressure here from bonds and Powell and everything else going on but to finalize it and to wrap up all the keys let me end it with my last thing with Powell we'll watch the earnings and all of that good stuff but here's the deal market was holding up it's been in this weird move I mean it technically barely moved today with all that being said and done but Powell was hawkish and we've seen this before and I'll just tell you this if whether it's after earnings whether it's just naturally because the market wants to do it if the market like bounces up or holds up and Powell really wants to be hawkish the next time we hear from him, he is going to adopt what he said today a lot more forcefully. So pretty much if he's just acknowledging it today, that's like, yo, we should be on notice. You should be noticing those three-month averages and some of the reality of the data now after much time has gone on. But other than that, if Powell really wants to be hawkish and like today was him kind of bringing that up to keep us calm a little bit, if he really wanted things to tighten up and really wanted to adopt a more hawkish approach, then next time we hear from him, I'd be on the lookout if he reiterates what he said today. But we'll see how everybody takes this tomorrow. The analyst and everything else and even the earnings we get to wake up to in the morning. But now... Uh let us get into the play. So, 
right off the bat. I got a couple of different plays. I even made a few here today, and that's actually some of them I'm going to share with you. And I'll start with the first one. I made a play on this one, Morgan Stanley. They had a good earnings, and I have Morgan Stanley and Bank of America because these banks, kind of fascinating. I mean, quarter two, I think last quarter was a little bit more pivotal, but Morgan Stanley, if you've been following along with the story, they held up. They did good. They did good on wealth management and the net interest income. They had a pop. They held up even as we sold off today. And the thing about their options, they did not really have a premium. So I made a play. I kept it small. I only spent about $13. I grabbed a next week $98 call for 13 cents. But even though the stock was up, I think like 5% at one point, those options did not really have a premium. And then as the stock gave up some, they went down. But stock held up most of the day. Watch for a continuation depending on whether the market starts moving or if it keeps responding. Obviously, we've been getting pressure from a lot of different factors, but I think when the dust settles, that's why maybe we'll need more time. Morgan Stanley should be good, and then Bank of America, they had their earnings today. It was both good and bad. They beat on earnings. Their net income or net interest income was actually good, and even their provisions wasn't that bad, but then like certain area and parts of their credit metrics weren't that good, and then they had a little bit on the conference call. They were going back and forth, but I think this thing is going to move all over the place. I mean, it was like 4 or 5%. It was even gapped up a little bit in the morning. So like I'm saying here, even with Morgan Stanley, let some of the dust settle. But these two might have some big moves on there. So going to be watching out for these two. That is play number one. Then play number two. This is the other play that I made today, and I just made a play on this not too long ago, a couple weeks ago, but Nordstrom's, and like I'm saying here, I went for the double dip, and the news prior was them going private. Remember, it was Macy's, then JWM. They pretty much got the same news. They had the pop. They've recently had earnings that they dropped on, and then they were able to get woken up a little bit on the going private news with everything else going on. That's where he played it. I got in a lot higher, I think a dollar higher than where I bought it today, and sold out for another dollar made some good money and then I said I might want to double dip and now it felt lower and it was just down this morning even yesterday was down I figured hey earnings is coming up market's already dropped a decent amount and since it has buyout news if the market does go down even more sells off with stuff at least there's something that could save it or give it some external value with everything else going on so nothing has really changed but we are still waiting on that buyout news so that's the element of speculation but going to be holding that I grabbed a thousand shares at 1750 today the first time I traded it I did like 500 shares I think at 1870 so I like it should be pretty exciting and then we'll see and then early too they dropped the other day because of the bad retail sales and then there was something else so one of the retailers they had bad earnings there I, we were just talking about it but that factors into all of it we'll see how that all plays out but that is play number two and then finally watch out for those chip earnings and everything else but arm remember i was talking about that 122 and then it popped and then surprisingly it took a while to get back down here well it's back down there now at that 122 and it's kind of quiet again in chip land so that could either help or hurt you and what i mean by that is it might start getting loud soon we are about to have earnings and i don't know if you guys have noticed but amd intel uh there's another name smci today that went crazy it got a price target raise last price target raise from loop cap was like 600 they came out with a $1,500 price target ahead of these earnings if you get upgraded or downgraded that could either kill or start some of these pre-earnings moves so arm is definitely going to get brought up y'all remember that one was a crazy one that we hit on the last earnings season so we'll see how that plays out but I like it at this price going to be watching it for a flip not in love remember it's like an 1800 PE or something crazy but we'll see how that plays out as far as everything else only plays I made today was that Morgan Stanley and the JWN still riding out my gold short that went a little bit against me so again remember I was just green on it yesterday then it pulled back so still riding in those still in some bond plays getting worked if anything I am eyeing a little bit of oil and then earnings we did run some of the earnings calculations today I did quick runs there was ULA they beat that could be a good one but I think all of the earnings today moved pretty much within what they were priced so maybe we could save a little bit here it's still early in er early in the earnings season but remember in a couple days here TSM the Netflix it should start to get excited but Chad uh, that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. 
And I need you to remember there's a reward. And if you got to remember or remind yourself, it'll take you a long way and give you effort in the work. But just listen, if you everything you do in the market is for a reward. Learn from the speculation, baby. Keep it in mind and let it fuel you, bitch, Chad. Drink that water. Stay hydrated, healthy. Get some good sleep. I'll see you in the morning. That's all I have for you. I love you and horn. <laughs>